The last thing we talked about was matching shadows. Now we need to think about the other side of it, and that's matching other lighting. So if there should be highlights on someone because of the direction of the sun, for example. But just before I get to that, I want to point out this particular image with the shadow. One of the things that I mentioned in that session was to look at existing shadows. So that's why in this case there actually is one of those sort of what I would call traditional cast shadows, and that's because the original photograph was taken, that's actually the real shadow that was that day, the way the position of the sun and where it was. So I based my new shadow on this one. So that's why there actually is a cast shadow because it needed it in this particular case. I probably could have got away with something not quite like that, but that's again based on the real shadow that was there and the fact that there's a big shadow on this car right here in the foreground meant I had to use this as kind of a reference to try and make the colors match up a little bit. What I want to talk about in this session though is the other side of it. If there was really a bright light coming here then this side of her, her arm and even the side of her face should be brighter. The sun should be on there and this actually should be perhaps even a little darker. So one of the ways to do this that's fairly simple, it takes a bit of trial and error to get the right combination of factors, but it basically goes like this. I'm just going to add a new layer on top and then I'm going to choose a color. Now I can either go pure white or very close to it and this is one of these techniques where you have to kind of wait to see the end result because about halfway through you'll probably be going really that's your technique because I can tell you right now it does look a little odd at first. For the paintbrush we need to just be normal 100% opacity soft edge brush and all I'm going to do is paint partially on her arm and partially not. Maybe make it a little smaller and do a little bit right here and even on her pants a little bit and up here because that's where the light source is. Now of course that looks really bad right now so we have to do two things. First of all we want to make sure that this paint is only visible inside her body not in the areas be around her and we can do that in a variety of ways that technique we want to use is called the clipping mask. So I can either just choose it from the layer menu and again we're not finished yet or I could come over here to the layers panel hold down the option or alt key right in the line between those two layers. This is the way I normally do it because I figure I'm in the layers panel anyway and there's also a keyboard shortcut for it too. So now the good part is the light only appears inside her body not bleeding out into the background. Having said that, there's still, I want to make some adjustments to it. So before I change anything else, I think I'm going to take my eraser at about 50% opacity and just get rid of some of this. I don't want to be quite so intense here. Something like that and maybe on her face just a bit. All right, now let's get even a little closer. And now it's a matter of playing with blend modes. I would usually start with overlay and possibly soft light which is a slightly lower version. Let's go with overlay to begin with so you can look at the difference. See how we're getting that nice little highlight there. It's a little intense so it'll lower the opacity a little bit. And one of the hardest things to do when you're doing this kind of thing is it's all very nice to turn layers on and off to see a before and after but we tend to be our own worst critics because we are seeing the difference. So this is a case where whenever I work on this kind of thing with lighting, I usually add it and then leave it alone for a while and come back later and see if I need to tweak it any further. Because when you just keep going like this and sort of going before, after, before, after at a certain point, you're like, oh, that's still too much. Just leave it for a while and come back a little bit later on. Now I could do the same kind of theory to try and darken up this arm just a little bit on this outside. Add a new layer, get my paintbrush, add that to the same group. This one's a little harder to choose. I still tend to start with overlay, but it tends to just make it look like more of a suntan, which is okay too. Uh, could also try other options like pin light and then very quickly lowering the opacity down a lot because that tends to look a little artificial. And it may also be in this case that perhaps the best bet for me is to take my eyedropper and sample a color from her 
other arm. Now I need to fill this color and only fill the areas that I've already have paint on there. So I do that by using the keyboard shortcut Option, Shift, Delete, or Alt, Shift, Backspace. And that's the keyboard shortcut for fill, preserving a transparency. So now if I go to Overlay, yeah, that looks a little better, I think. Probably should have done that to begin with. As we talked about in other sessions, don't spend too much time zooming in really, really close to make these kind of decisions. You also want to look at it in the context of the overall photograph. So now we can say here's the original and here's now. Now for some situations, you might want to add a bit of different light in a kind of a different way. Now we've put her in a different background where there's apparently some glowing red light source off to this side. So it would kind of make sense for her to ha look a little more reddish. So once again, this is a camera smart object. So the first thing I'd probably do is go in and change the temperature itself. So she's looking a little more on the red side. But the other thing I would do, similar kind of concept to begin with. First of all, let's take our eyedropper and pick up our red color. I've got a new layer. We're going to take our paintbrush and I'm going to paint along where I'd like there to be a bit more red. Now I'm going to do something on her pants, but I am pretty sure it's going to go away based on this technique. It starts off the same way. I still have to make that clipping mask so the colors only appear in certain areas. And now once again that I've done that, I can start to take my eraser a little bit because I just want a little bit of a highlight that's red. Now this next part of the technique comes from my friend Glenn Dewis, who's a UK photographer and Photoshop trainer. He came up with this idea and I thought it was really brilliant because it, it's a quick way to make sure the colors only show up in the highlights because I don't want reddish tinge everywhere. I just want in a real photograph, the highlights would be the part that would reflect the red. So we double click beside the name of the layer and we get these blend if sliders at the bottom here. And what I want to do is this layer is the layer with the red, underlying layer is our model. So if I take this underlying layer and start to move this slider, you'll see what it starts to do is anywhere where it's dark, it'll start to disappear. And that's fine because that just confirms for me those are not real highlights. So as I start to move it further, and I'll over exaggerate it first, you can see that's what starts to happen. I don't want it to go quite that extreme that quickly. So I'm going to pull back and then I, to make a softer edge, I hold down Option or Alt and split the triangle. So when I do that, now it kind of does a much softer kind of effect. And again, this is, this is still just the initial effect. I still need to adjust it. And then it's just a matter of trying to find the right combination of a blend mode. I think I like overlay, slightly lower opacity. And you'll see that's just got that nice little effect where there's just a little tiny bit of red but it looks more realistic. Now this this technique would only I would only use it for situations where you have a very specific color of light source. Most of the time this method of just painting with white and then changing the blend mode and the opacity. And you see once I come back to this after a while it looks pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I might adjust this up here a little bit, but that's kind of the idea as a way to try to match not only the shadow as we talked about previously, but also the light.